Yellowstone. Envision vast green forests and bison wandering freely. Imagine Old Faithful, the iconic geyser launching hot water skyward. Established in 1872, Yellowstone is America's first national park. Beneath these breathtaking landscapes, something powerful is at work. The park sits atop one of the world's largest active volcanic systems, a supervolcano. It has experienced massive eruptions in the distant past. While admiring a wildflower or observing a grizzly bear, remember what's beneath your feet, a vast chamber of molten rock or magma. This magma fuels the famous geysers, bubbling mud pots and steaming hot springs. These features provide a glimpse into the Earth's fiery core. Yellowstone is a realm of wild, untamed nature. It's beautiful, yet somewhat intimidating. We are captivated by these places of immense natural power. To understand Yellowstone is to understand this duality. It's a park, a sanctuary, and a geological wonder. Recently, this wonder has been showing intriguing signs of activity, making us pay even closer attention. Yellowstone is more than just geysers. It's a window into the Earth's power. Let's delve deeper into this supervolcano. Yellowstone is a caldera, an enormous underground chamber brimming with magma. When it erupts violently, the chamber empties, causing the ground to collapse and form a vast crater. The present Yellowstone caldera spans approximately 30 by 45 miles. Yellowstone has experienced massive eruptions in its past. The largest one occurred around 2.1 million years ago. Another significant eruption took place 1.3 million years ago. The most recent super eruption happened about 631,000 years ago. A massive magma chamber still lies beneath Yellowstone. One part is shallower, filled with a rocky, crystal-rich mush. Below that, there's a deeper, larger reservoir of hotter, more molten rock. This is the source of heat for all of Yellowstone's geothermal features. The ground at Yellowstone actually moves. It rises and falls as magma shifts beneath the surface. Scientists have been monitoring this for decades. Sometimes it rises a few inches a year, other times it subsides. This is typical behavior for such a large and active caldera system. It's like a giant underground lung, slowly inhaling and exhaling. These movements are usually very subtle. Sensitive instruments detect them, providing crucial insights into what's happening deep below. Yellowstone's volcanic heart is a testament to the immense geological power beneath our feet. It's a constant reminder that the volcanic giant is not dead. It's merely dormant and occasionally it stirs. Let's head over to Mount St. Helens in Washington State. It's part of the Cascade Range, a series of volcanic mountains. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted dramatically. This was the most deadly and economically damaging volcanic event in U.S. history. The eruption blew off the entire top and north side of the mountain. It sent a massive plume of ash miles into the sky. Before 1980, Mount St. Helens was a stunning, symmetrical cone. The eruption left behind a huge, horseshoe-shaped crater. The surrounding landscape was devastated. Forests were flattened and rivers were clogged with mudflows, known as lahars. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano, built from layers of lava, ash, and rock. Since 1980, it has had periods of lesser activity. From 2004 to 2008, it experienced renewed dome growth. Thick, pasty lava oozed into the crater, slowly forming a new lava dome. There were also steam explosions and minor ash emissions. Recently, in late 2024 and early 2025, Mount St. Helens has experienced some tremors. Small earthquake swarms are common at active volcanoes like Mount St. Helens. They often occur as magma moves deep underground, or as fluids and gases circulate within the volcano's plumbing system. These tremors are usually too small to be felt by people, but sensitive seismometers can detect them. Scientists analyze the data and look for patterns. Mount St. Helens reminds us of the immense power of volcanoes, even those that aren't currently erupting. What do these tremors at Mount St. Helens signify? They indicate that the volcano is very much active. The recent tremor swarms consist of small magnitude earthquakes. Generally, they are less than magnitude 1 or 2. These tremors occur at certain depths beneath the mountain. 
This implies they might be linked to the slow movement of magma, or the pressurization of hydrothermal fluids, hot water and steam. Volcanoes are dynamic systems, constantly adjusting to pressures from below. Think of it as a complex plumbing system. Sometimes, blockages occur, causing pressure to build up. Occasionally, new pathways open up for fluids to move. These processes can trigger small earthquakes. The scientists at the U.S. Geological Survey USGS, are skilled at interpreting these subtle signals. They examine the depth, frequency, and type of seismic waves produced. These recent tremors are not seen as precursors to a major eruption. The current activity falls within the normal range for an active volcano. Any change in activity requires careful observation. Scientists monitor and learn. Mount St. Helens is one of the most active volcanoes in the Cascade Range. These current, minor tremors are just small notes in its ongoing story. They are whispers from the depths. Are these volcanoes linked? Mount St. Helens is experiencing tremors. Yellowstone is also showing signs of activity. Are these events related? Likely not in a direct cause and effect manner. Geographically, Yellowstone and Mount St. Helens are quite distant from each other. They belong to different geological systems. Mount St. Helens is a cascade volcano driven by subduction. Yellowstone is fueled by a mantle plume. These are distinct mechanisms. However, both are situated in the western United States. The entire region is influenced by the movement of tectonic plates. The Pacific Plate is pressing against the North American Plate. This interaction creates a complex network of faults and zones of weakness in the crust. In a broader sense, they are part of the same geological neighborhood. The Earth's crust resembles a giant, cracked eggshell. The pieces, or tectonic plates, are in constant motion. Occasionally, a large earthquake in one area can subtly alter the stress field in another distant region. The tremors at Mount St. Helens are quite small. They are unlikely to have any significant impact on Yellowstone. Both remind us that the ground beneath us is not static. It's a dynamic, ever-changing environment, especially in regions like the American West. Yellowstone on the rise, the swelling ground. Recent observations indicate a rapid uplift in certain areas of the caldera. The ground is noticeably rising, not dramatically, but inches over a vast region. These changes are detected by highly sensitive GPS instruments and satellite radar. This uplift is occurring in areas that have experienced it before. For instance, the Sour Creek Dome and the Mallard Lake Dome. Resurgent domes are regions elevated by magma pressure from below. This type of uplift is not new to Yellowstone. There have been cycles of uplift and subsidence throughout its history. What causes this ground to rise? The movement or accumulation of magma or hydrothermal fluids deep underground. Picture inflating a large, flat balloon buried beneath the surface. The ground above it would bulge upwards. It could be new magma entering the shallower parts of the magma chamber, or existing magma releasing more hot gases and fluids. Uplift doesn't necessarily mean an eruption is imminent. Yellowstone has had many uplift episodes without erupting. This current uplift phase is faster than some previous ones. Scientists are monitoring it closely. The magma chamber is extensive. Small changes in pressure or volume can lead to noticeable surface deformation. Interpreting the signs. What does this mean for us? Mount St. Helens is experiencing tremors Yellowstone is showing ground uplift. What implications does this have for the public? Should we be preparing to evacuate? The simple answer is no. The current activity levels at both volcanoes are of scientific interest, but they do not suggest an imminent crisis. There are no indications of an impending major eruption at either site. Volcano observatories use well-defined alert level systems. For instance, green or normal indicates the volcano is in its usual, non-eruptive state. Yellow or advisory signifies the volcano is showing signs of increased activity. At present, Yellowstone is at a normal or green alert level. The ground uplift at Yellowstone is significant, but has occurred before without leading to an eruption. An eruption would likely be preceded by more dramatic signs. For the general public, the key message is to stay informed. Trust official sources like the USGS for updates. Avoid getting swept up by sensationalist headlines. 
These natural wonders are powerful and deserve our respect. Scientists are employing a wide range of tools to monitor them. The aim is to better understand these systems and provide timely warnings if conditions change. Vigilance on the Giants The Never-Ending Watch Our planet is ever-changing. Volcanoes like Yellowstone and Mount St. Helens epitomize this change. They are far from being mere static mountains. They are intricate systems with deep-seated roots. Keeping an eye on these giants is essential. This task is handled by dedicated scientists from the U.S. Geological Survey and partner universities. They employ a wide array of instruments, seismometers to detect tremors, GPS stations to track ground shifts, gas sensors to study emissions, satellites to observe from above. This ongoing surveillance helps us decode volcanic behavior. Every tremor, every inch of uplift, every gas emission adds to the puzzle. This information helps scientists identify patterns. It's akin to a doctor understanding a patient's health baseline. Monitoring is fundamentally about early detection. If a volcano shows signs of an imminent eruption, these tools will detect it. The aim is to provide as much advance notice as possible. This enables authorities to make informed decisions and issue timely warnings if needed.